Hey, I'm Melissa. And I'm Whitney. We started this true crime podcast over a glass of wine and quickly turned from true crime listeners into true crime advocates. So get comfy, pop a cork, and grab a glass because we have work to do. This is Colts, Crimes, and Cabernet. Some content may be unsuitable for sensitive listeners. Discretion is advised. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. And we are almost to June. I know. School is out. School is yeah. out. And it. we just had a lovely holiday weekend. Yes, we did. Summer is here. And with summer comes big things. Why am I like cringing, but also I'm so excited, but I'm also so just like in a weird space of nervousness, excitement. Because we know what's coming on June 1st, but they don't know what's coming on June 1st. Yeah. And it's a big deal. It's been a long time coming and we're excited to share it with you. We're going to make you wait. <laughs> yes. And we will share it on June 1st. So mm-hmm. be looking at our social medias. Whitney and I will have a nice little video for you guys coming out. And, you know, comment on this episode or let us know if you think you know what it is. Yeah. Because we've dropped some hints over the last month or so. There's been a few Easter eggs here and there. If you think you've caught them, let us know. We're pulling our inner Taylor Swift here with our Easter eggs. She's so good, though. I We cannot even oh, imagine. No, not all. even. Can't even hold a candle to it. But we tried. Because <laughs> hers are years in advance. Ours are like, okay, we've got three weeks. What can we do? <laughs> we also don't have a team of people that we pay to create those. So. Very true. Hashtag one day. One day. Yep. One day very soon, hopefully. Yes. We also have the True Crime and Paranormal Podcast Festival coming up. Yep. In August, it will be in my neck of the woods in Austin. It's going to be a good time. We've got lots of people coming. Susan Simpson from Proof will be there. Tara Newell and Collier Landry from Survivor Squad. They just dropped their show in earlier in May. And Julie Murray is going to be there. Our fave, Eric, all of our favorite podcast people, plus some we've not gotten to meet yet. So I'm excited about that. But yeah, if you want to get a ticket and you want to save money, because that's Melissa's favorite thing to do in the whole wide world is a coupon code. I love coupon codes. (laughs) Use Cabernet and it saves you 15% on your ticket. Yes. All right. So you've got a wine. I do. I am drinking a wine called Forest. It's a Pinot Grigio from Oregon. It ha- It's obviously a white wine with aromas of honeysuckle, tangerine, and ginger. It's also got some white peaches and herbs. Um, it begins with flavors of slate, lemongrass, and nectarine, finishes with a sweet ginger spice. So it is... Amazing because it's dry, but then you get that sweet fruit at the end, which I love. Kind of cleanses your palate from the bitterness. It sounds perfect for summer. Yes. Oh, I love summer wines. I really got to get us a good spritzer. So North Carolina, this one we've been waiting for a while, right? We have. We have. I am excited to bring it to you all today. So like Whitney said, we will be traveling to the state of North Carolina. And we also had the opportunity to speak with the parents and sister of Jose Melendez, who was murdered in Raleigh in 2017. But first, a little about this town. Raleigh is the capital of North Carolina. And according to the 2020 census, there was about 467,000 people living within the city limits. This isn't North Carolina's most populated city, though. That title goes to Charlotte. Raleigh is known as the City of Oaks because of the oak trees that line the heart of the city. Raleigh is also known for being a part of what they call the Research Triangle. This area, along with Durham and Chapel Hill, 
has quite a few universities that are known for their researching work. A few famous people from this city are Mr. Beast, who is a YouTuber. We've got singer Clay Aikens and David Fox, who won a gold medal in the Olympics for swimming. We do know a lot about Mr. Beast in this household. I think that's a typical mom thing right now. Anyone who has a kid who watches YouTube knows who Mr. Beast is. Exactly. And if you don't follow Mr. Beast, I would recommend it because if he finds you walking around, he will give you $10,000. Absolutely. And he likes to hang out in Walmart. He does. He does. I follow seven people and Mr. Beast is one of them. (laughs) There is a very long list of notable people from the Raleigh area, but I just happened to randomly choose these three. Like most large cities, Raleigh has some very safe areas along with some dangerous spots. It is rated a 13 out of 100, with 100 being the safest. So obviously not the best, but honestly not anywhere near the worst we've had lately. It also has the same average as North Carolina as far as violent crime rate, and which both of them are just slightly over the United States average. Same with property crime, kind of right along the middle there as a whole. I would like to give a thumbs up to the city, which is crazy because it's a 13 out of 100, but because we've had such dangerous places there lately, Raleigh seems safe. Yeah, that really doesn't seem as terrible as other places we have talked about. Exactly. I don't, especially lately. Bragg Army Specialist on leave made a quick trip to Raleigh to go out with friends. At the end of the night, though, someone shot and killed him outside of an apartment complex as he was walking to his car. On November 29, 2017, Fort Bragg Army Specialist Jose Juan Melendez Jr., was on leave and made a quick trip to Raleigh to go out with friends to a bar called Black Flower. This particular night, the bar was having a Nightmare Before Christmas themed party where there was live music and people would dress up. Definitely a kickoff to the holidays type of event. Jose loved music, hanging out with his friends, and just having a great time. This was a regular thing that he did. Jose was also the designated driver that night, and he returned his friends at their townhome off of Raven Road there in Raleigh, North Carolina. He walked into the friend's house, stayed about 15 minutes while he gathered up his belongings, and then walked through the parking lot to his vehicle where he was gunned down. Around 3.20 a.m., here is Jose's family speaking about that horrible night. Well, Jose, we called him Jose, sometimes my mom with the nickname Gordo. But yeah, so we were, or he was born and raised here in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. We've lived most of our life in this area. My dad was in the service, so we've moved overseas a few times to Panama and Puerto Rico, then right back to Fort Bragg. He's very creative, very artistic guy. He loved music art and drawing, loved going to concerts. So yeah, pretty much a lot of his hobbies revolved around design and and drawings prior to joining the service. He was a pretty shy guy, so he would kind of seclude himself whenever we would go out and about, and he was in the drawing, as I stated. That, that, That was his thing. That was his getaway from being able to interact, especially at a younger age. So that, that's pretty much how he was as a kid growing up. He hated heights, didn't like whenever we would go to like the parks or anything like that, being high, but that changed as the time went on and he got older. And prior to joining the service, he graduated from Campbell University and he majored in graphic design. And then he did a few years trying to get into the field. And then ultimately he went back to wanting to join the military to be like my dad. He wanted to kind of get all the way into the special forces, but obviously, unfortunately his life and career was cut short. Yeah. So his 
path for joining the army, what type of a student he was. He was National Honor Society when he was in high school. Pretty smart guy, obviously, to make that. Went to Campbell University, got his bachelor's from there, but unfortunately wasn't able to pursue further with the education that he got from there. So in 2013 is when he decided to join the army, went to Fort Gordon, and then unfortunately he came back to us and wasn't able to really explore overseas. He had actually stated that he wished that he would have gone to like Italy or Germany or somewhere over there for his army time, but he came right, right back here to Fort Bragg. Was in basic training in his contract. He did not have the option to go to airborne school. That came about as he was finishing basic training. They pretty much, re they came by, recruited him and asked him if he wanted to go. And that's when he decided to go. But that door then opened up the opportunity for him to come back to us here. What about Jose's social life? I, I know he was with some friends that night, but they were they military friends? Were these friends from school? Most of them were friends from school. There were some that weren't from. They've never served like in the military. They were civilians from the Raleigh area. Especially, he loved, like I said, going out to concerts. He loved EDM music. The night that he passed, it was a weekly event. I think it was every Tuesday night was a different theme, but it still revolved around like live music. I think mostly like EDM. And I think that night he passed, it was the nightmare before Christmas theme. Cause it was, yeah, it was the end, the last weekend of November. And so it was, everyone had like costumes. Right. He okay. had to report back to Bragg the next day. So he was on leave the night that he drove out to Raleigh and drove his friends to that event and then driving them back to their apartment. So he, was, he wasn't living in the Raleigh area. He was just there for the event and to hang out with his friends one more night before reporting back to Fort Bragg. He would live and stay with us Friday, Saturday here at mm -hmm. the house. And then he would go back, back to the base and spend the whole week there. So from Fort Bragg to where he was at was probably an hour and 15 minutes. So yeah, so he didn't live in that like apartment complex. We didn't know much about the crime in that area. I think the most that they've ever had maybe like car break-ins, nothing like extreme, like murders or like assaults. The area, if you were to visit, even entering is very nice, Raleigh. I mean, where the apartments were, right behind it, you could see like a recreation area and then like big houses, like I wouldn't say like mansions, but like very nice houses. And it was it's a private area too, because if you don't live in those apartment areas, you're pretty much told to leave. Can we go ahead and get into that night? So. We'll go a few days back from that time frame. The last time that we seen him was on Thanksgiving night. We had a little Thanksgiving get together. So obviously on a Thursday is when the last time that we have seen him. I'm, I'm sorry. He actually stayed with me up until Sunday. Sunday is when he normally went back to Fort, Fort Bragg to spend the week there. So that was the last time we interacted with him. So then fast forward, he went to Robin, designated driver, did all of that. For me personally, I knew none of that as far as him going there to do that. I'll tell you my perspective of what happened. That was Wednesday, November 29th of 2017. And I was putting the alarm to leave from, I'll say 830 in the morning when I got a knock on the door from the Fayetteville PD and a, the individual asked me if I was the father of, and the first thing I said to him was, what did he do wrong? Good money habits starts with your very first paycheck. 
And if you're like my oldest son, Lucas, and just scored your very first paying job, you've got an opportunity to jumpstart a healthy financial journey. When you sign up for Chime and link the qualifying direct deposit, you get access to benefits like getting paid up to two days early and a fee-free overdraft up to $200. And with Chime, there's no monthly fees, no minimum balance, and no deposit required to become a member. To me, it's a no-brainer. So sign up for a Chime checking account today to link your paycheck. It only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash Cabernet. That's Chime.com slash Cabernet. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bank Corp Bank NA or Stride Bank NA members FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. See chime.com slash spot me. He said, if I could, I'd like to step inside the house because I'd like to talk to you personally. At that, mo- at that moment, that's when I knew, okay, this is a little bit more serious than him probably getting into some accident or something like that. He went straight into it, didn't beat around the bush, and he stated, well, I'm here because your son was in a altercation. Those were his exact words. He said, your son was in a altercation last night. So he was already back backtracking. He said that uh, he got into a, a incident, was shot, taken to the hospital, and that he passed at 4.30 in the morning. That's exactly how it was told to me. That was like an unbelievable punch to the gut. I took a seat and the reason why more than anything was because I was the first one to have been told about anything. Jose's mom was with her mom in Panama. So she wasn't even here for any of this. Mara was living somewhere else. So now the thoughts are going through, how do I tell them I can't see the mom face to face to I'll tell her. So my only option is to call her over the phone to explain all of this and the same with the sister. So just gathering my thoughts and trying to put it all together in a way that it just made sense because at that time I was still in shock to myself. Uh, So I got up the courage and said, we just have to do what we have to do to make this thing start. So. I was able to inform the mom first and told, told her and she had to leave her mom and got on a plane that afternoon to come back here to start the entire thing. Then I told his sister and then we got together and the army came the next day after that. When the incident occurred, now we're going, you know, now we're going off of claims uh, Mm -hmm. because obviously because it's still under investigation and the case is still ongoing. They weren't able, or they're still not able to disclose the exact details Mm -hmm. of what exactly happened. It's all a perspective and claims more than anything, but actual facts, the individual that called 911, the reason why she called 911 was because when the shots were fired, one of the rounds hit her daughter's window. She was in a apartment duplex that's a a townhome. So it's a three story townhome and her daughter was on the second floor. So at three in the morning, her daughter got the, one of the rounds that went into her room, hit her window. So that woke her up. Then the individual that called 911 was on the third floor. She instantly looked outside and the only thing she was 